Let us take a look at example 1. Express each of the following three goal ratio as an acute angle and determine whether are they positive or negative. So let's start with part A. All right, now we're supposed to sign this monster 1000 degrees. Okay, so first thing first, first thing of the day. The well, first thing we will have to find out would be where exactly is 1000 degrees. Okay, so all of us know that well, one full round is 360 degrees. So it, if it were to be 360 degrees, we will come back to square one. It's the same as zero degrees, right? So if it goes two rounds, then it will be 720 degrees. So let's move on. About three rounds, it will give us 1,800. Um, sorry, 1,080 degrees. So what it means is that well, if we have 1,080 degrees, it will be three full rounds, and we're back to square one. It's the same as zero. So but now we don't have 1,080. We have 1,000, which is 80 degrees short of. 1080. So what it means is that for 1000 degrees, this is what actually goes on. You go one round, two rounds, and almost three rounds. We we'll stop here. Okay, because three rounds will be um, 1080 degrees. But you know, well, it's m not more than um, 1080 degrees. In fact, it's 80 degrees less than. So therefore, we know that you know it will be here. This angle will be here. Alright, you'll be represented by this line here. And the acute angle that we're the most concerned with all right, will be here. This will be our acute angle that we're interested in. And this acute angle will then uh, of course happen to be 80 degrees. What this tells us is to say that well sine 1000 degrees is the same as to say that well we want to sine 80 degrees. Alright, the only problem is that this acute angle or this basic angle is now in the fourth quadrant. And being a sign, a trigger ratio sign, in the fourth quadrant, we know that the answer will have to be a negative. Okay, how do you verify this? Okay, very simple. You can take out a calculator, key in um, sine 1000 degrees. And later on, key in sine 80 degrees negative. Or you'll see we get the same answer. And this is uh, precisely what is going on, what, uh, how it works. Okay? Now let's move to part B then. Alright, part B, we are now supposed to play around with cosine. And we're going to cosine 2310 degrees. Oh my goodness, how many rounds is this? Alright, so again, the first thing we realize is, of course, okay, we have to go figure out. Um, just exactly where is this angle. So we know that one round is 360, so two rounds is 720, uh, three rounds will give us only 1080 degrees. So, well, by mental sum, we know that if it's six rounds, we will go like 2160 degrees, isn't it? But, well, this is 2300. So, what do we do? Well, very simple. We take our calculator and we'll key in. Alright, 2310 divided by 360 degrees. So this is this way we will try to find out um, how many rounds, how many full rounds uh, do we have. So from the calculator we will get 6 and 5 over 12. What this means is that there are 6 full rounds to this three, uh, 2310 degrees. There's six full rounds, you're gonna go six rounds, okay? And well, after it goes the six round, it has only a uh, five over 12 of a round left. All right, so we'll make full use of this five over 12 of a round. So what does it mean to be five over 12 of a round? So one full round is 360 degrees. So five over 12 of a full round will then of course be 150 degrees. Okay, you can easily check this using a calculator. So what this means is that to cosine an unsim, you know, unimaginable angle. Okay, uh, to cosine 2,310 degrees is the same as to say that you want to cosine 150 degrees. Okay, but this is not a cube angle, isn't it? Remember, the question wants us to leave our answer in a cube angle. So this is not an acute angle yet. So 150 degrees will be somewhere here in the second quadrant. 
Okay, so if this is 150 degrees, the basic acute angle that we'll be most interested in will be this little angle here, 30 degrees in the second quadrant. So what then we know is that, well, to cosine 150 degrees is the same as to cosine 30 degrees. Alright, but negative. Why is it negative? Well, because remember that all signs teach you crazy. So only sign will be positive in the second quadrant and everything else will be negative in the second quadrant. So cosine should be negative in the second quadrant. Again, how do you verify this? Very simple. Press a calculator. Cosine 2310 degrees and then press cosine 30 degrees. Negative. Or right, you realize that you get the same number. Alright, so let us move on to tangent now. Okay, now part C, we're going to do a tangent 590 degrees. Okay, so one look at this, we know that, aha, it is less than two rounds. Okay, this time around it's a lot easier. Okay, less than two rounds, because two rounds will give us 720. So we want to find out, you know, just what exactly how, uh, is one round plus, but exactly plus how much. Okay, so we'll take 590 degrees, minus 360 degrees, that will give us 230 degrees. What this means is, well, tangent 590 is the same as to tangent 230. Alright? And where exactly is this 230 degrees? Again, because this is not an acute angle. So 230 degrees is somewhere here in the third quadrant, isn't it? So 230 degrees, this is 230 degrees. Okay, so this little acute angle here, all right, which is what we are most concerned with, will then be 50 degrees. Okay, how do we get 50 degrees? Of course, we know if this whole thing is uh, 230 and this is 180, so we take 230 minus 180, we get 50 degrees. So we know that the tangent 230 degrees is actually the same as to say we want to tangent a 50 degrees acute angle. Okay, but because it is in the third quadrant and we are all signs teacher, okay, T stands for tangent and tangent will be positive in the fourth quadrant, I'm uh, sorry, third quadrant, alright, and therefore, okay, it will be positive. Again, you can verify this answer using your calculator. Alright, now let us move on to part D then. Okay, part D now, we'll, th we'll be talking about negative angle. Okay, so far we haven't encountered any negative angle. Alright, so negative angle, wow, oh wow, how does it look like? Very, very easy. Okay, I mean, if so far you have managed to understand what is going on, what has been going on here, understanding the idea of a negative angle shouldn't be that challenging anyway. Alright, now remember that we measure angle in anti-clockwise direction. So that would be for positive angles. Now if we have negative angles, we sim it simply means that we are going to measure it the clockwise direction. Okay? So 400 and negative 440 degrees what will be the same as to say that we're going to go clockwise direction 440 degrees. Okay? And of course we need to go figure out uh, where exactly where do we stop. So we need to figure out uh, 440 degrees if we take away one round, that means we take away 360 degrees, what is left? Okay, so we use our calculator, we know that we'll be left with only negative 80 degrees. So we know that, okay, sine 400, negative 440 degrees is the same as to sine negative 80 degrees. Alright, and negative 80 degrees will be precisely here, somewhere here. Okay, here. Alright, this little angle here. Okay, so it is this direction that makes it negative 80 degrees. So where is the acute angle? Where is the acute or basic angle here in this quadrant? Well, it is the same angle, isn't it? Okay, so the basic acute angle is 80 degrees. So to sign negative 80 degrees is to say that, well, it's the same as to say we want to sign 80 degrees. But because now sign is in the fourth quadrant, it will be a negative answer. All right? Okay, so let us move on to E. All right, we're going to cosine 200 degrees. Okay, so let us scroll down a little bit. We need more space here so that we can still see the question. Okay, great. So cosine 200 degrees negative, that'll be part E. 
Alright, first of all, we need to go figure out where exactly is this negative 200 degrees, isn't it? So, all of us should know that negative 200 degrees is actually less than one round, but it's more than 180. So, this way, this is negative 90, negative 180, negative 200. Alright, so negative 200 degrees is this angle here, and the basic angle that we'll be most interested in to find out will be this little angle here. So if this entire angle is 200 degrees, this angle will give us 20 degrees. Okay, um, why? Well, 200 minus 180 will give us 20 degrees. So the acute angle is 80 degrees. So to say that we want to cosine minus 200 degrees is to say that we want to cosine 20 degrees acute angle in the second quadrant and cosine in the second quadrant will give us a negative answer and again you can verify this using the calculator All right last one okay f so we want to find out what is tangent negative one two three zero degrees okay so again uh, from previous experience we should know that this is definitely more than two rounds because two rounds will be uh, 720 degrees so this is more than 1080 degrees so it's actually more than three rounds so what we want to do is of course first thing go and figure out how many um, rounds this will make so we know that you'll make about three rounds okay so we will take away um, 1080 degrees from here and we realize that the tangent negative 1230 degrees is to say that we want to tangent negative 150 degrees okay and of course the job next is to go figure out where is this 150 degrees negative so again here going by the clockwise direction this negative 90 negative 150 will be somewhere here Okay, so this angle here is the negative 150 degrees, and of course, the basic acute angle that we're the most interested in will be this angle here, which will be 30 degrees. So the tangent negative 150 degrees is to say that we want to tangent 30 degrees. Okay, and of course, all signs teach you crazy again. T stands for tangent, and therefore tangent in the third quadrant is positive. So we just leave it alone. There's no negative to it. Okay, so I hope this example will further enhance your understanding and knowledge of how the basic acute angle works.